Good morning, everyone. Um, so we're on to our third lesson on discussion. You've had a good look at the text, I should think, by now. You've done your vocabulary yesterday based on the formal language. Some of those words you might have seen, some of them you perhaps haven't, like moreover or thus or therefore. And hopefully you've worked out the definitions of those and written them in your own language. Not Don't just write di dictionary definitions. So the question is, should we be allowed to bring mobile phones into school? So we are looking again, we're going back to persuasion because basically argument is just persuading from two sides, not just one side. So you might remember some of our persuasive te techniques we used before. Do you remember we were talking about the dog and whether children should have a dog in school? Well, same sort of idea, but we're going to be doing it from both sides. So what I suggest you do is you write a list of ideas for children bringing a mobile phone into school. And then on the other side, write a list for children why they shouldn't. And that will just give you the ideas and the basic ideas for what you're going to base your writing on today. So I've jotted down here just a few ideas. So I said that having a mobile phone in school is vital because every child needs to feel safe. So the idea that children might need a phone just in case something happened, if there were danger, if you'd forgotten something or you couldn't walk home for some reason and your parents would be worrying about you, you could be able to contact them. So again, you can contact your parents at any time of the day and you could perhaps use it on the internet for research and homework so it might expand your learning all good reasons why now let's go to the against reasons it's very distracting it could stop you from focusing on your work if you you know you get a text halfway through a lesson you could be told off you've got you know a huge chance of you trying to sneak a text under a table if someone's text you and the teacher will know you could be tr um, in trouble you could lose it you could break it it could be taken out of your bag for some reason you know there are all sorts of reasons why not having a mobile phone in school is a good idea you know a lot of people in the secondary school use their phones a lot but they do cause great big problems so you've got a few ideas for and against three each so what i thought we'd do today is we're going to have a go at a few sentences using some of that formal language see if you can add in some of those words that you had on your never heard grid so i've just done a few here and a couple two or three for one side of the argument a couple for the other side of the argument so we take it for granted that owning a mobile phone is vital for everyday life some people however believe them believe having them in school can lead to problems and a lack of success later in life. You'll notice I've used, we take it for granted, so we learned about that yesterday, that everyone sees that owning a mobile phone is norm normal, it's not something special. Remember to use generalizers. Generalizers are words where we describe not specific people, but general people like people or children or adults or humans. It doesn't really matter what generalizer you use. Humans wouldn't work, obviously, in this case. But you know, society believes that owning a mobile phone and taking it into school is a vital part of life. Firstly, forgetting your books could result in getting into trouble. And as a consequence, which you might have used, you might have to catch up in your own time. Furthermore, using a phone in class is very distracting. Thus, you might slow your learning and therefore your life chances are reduced. So I've tried to get in some of the language that we used yesterday. And if you know the meanings, furthermore, meaning in addition, thus meaning showing that you would slow your learning and therefore and because of another reason of doing that your life chances might be reduced so we're going to look at the opposing views on the other hand so on the other hand knowing you have the security of having your phone on you as you walk home alone is very reassuring and subsequently you gain confidence and maturity in your actions so we've used on the other hand and then you've got the idea of subsequently, which means that it's an action that, and then there's another action. So the fact that you've got your mobile home, which allows you to walk home feeling confident, you then, because of that confidence, gain maturity. On balance, now this is the one where we talk about at the end, you do one side, then the other, and the on balance sentence is the one that brings the two ideas together, and you can, and you can choose, you can decide which, which side of the argument you want to go with. So on balance, we believe having a phone at all times is a vital part of everyday life and should be considered a necessity. Or, if you're going with the other side, 
on balance, using a phone in school is very distracting and can ruin your life chances of success. Moreover, you could find the phone becomes an addictive habit that's very hard to break. So what we're going to do today, just try and use those persuasive techniques that we talked about before, only seeing it from one side of the argument and then seeing it from the other side of the argument and rewriting some of those sentences, have a go at some of the language from yesterday. So you've learned the words, you've, you've had a go at finding their definition, and now we're going to use them in sentences today to, to really add to that level of formality when it comes to writing a persuasive and discussive text. Okay, so have a go at a few of those, send them in to us, and we look forward to seeing your work very soon. See you tomorrow.